What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. I was just playing a little bit of Nintendo Switch and thinking about the fact that this console sort of has a strange problem that nobody could have guessed, which is that there are so many incredibly addictive games to play on it that it's kind of hard to keep up. I mean, if you just spent a hundred hours playing stuff like Mario Galaxy and Splatoon 2, you'll end up missing out on some amazing titles that deserve your attention. So this week, I've dived deep through my own personal collection to try and find the coolest stuff you have probably have not even heard of on my list of the top 10 Nintendo Switch hidden gems. Number 10. Dragon Quest Builders. This project has appeared on many different consoles in lots of different formats, but I feel like it's here on the Switch where it's truly most at home. And the reason I say that is because this is a building game that's sort of about establishing your own place within this world. Solving problems, doing objectives, and constructing your own cities. It's kind of something that's great to play on the go, getting to try it out for short sections of time and then pick it up later. Whether you're playing this for 15 minutes or 15 hours, it's really unique because because it establishes itself as something that wants you to create your own style of enjoyment within this awesome world. Number 9. The End is Nigh. If I had to choose just a single word to describe this awesome game, I'd use precision, because really, that's the most important thing about this. Aiming your jumps perfectly to avoid a certain death is really, really vital, and that's really just all you have to worry about. The End is Nigh is basically a platformer with the difficulty stuck on very, very hard. But what's kind of cool about it is, every single screen is its own level, and really when you think about it, you basically just have to perfectly master 9 or 10 jumps in a row. And because of it, it creates this really nice tight challenge where you always feel like you're next to finishing something and you keep wanting to try more and more to get to that next incredibly arduous map. Number 8. Blossom Tales. There are a ton of ultra hardcore fans of Zelda out there who have been looking for another adventure that sort of scratches that itch of putting you back in Hyrule and giving you a nice little boss to beat. Well, since there's nothing else around, I started digging through the indie marketplace and I discovered Blossom Tales, something that is basically a fan remake of all the best moments of SNES Zelda. I mean, it has tough puzzles, cool enemies to try and battle, and tons of little spots to try and discover. You can get lost within this world just trying to discover half of its secrets, but that's kind of the fun of it. I'd even say that strangely, I probably enjoyed my second playthrough more because I used a strategy guide and discovered a ton of side stuff that I'd completely overlooked. You need to get this if for no other reason that it will leave a memory in your head that you'll never forget. Number 7. Nine Parchments. Let me begin this entry by saying that you definitely need to pick this up with a friend. While it's okay to play it on your own, I feel like this game really begins to shine when it comes to co-op. Getting to have a buddy to back you up and have two different kinds of magic available at any one time, it really expands on this really great gameplay. Basically, you're mages who are trying to learn how to be the best magic users in the land, which requires that you go around recovering different lost spells. It has more depth than it appears though because you're constantly constantly trying to juggle all your different kinds of magic, from laying down healing spells to blasting people with ice beams, and you end up trying to communicate with your partner a lot to make sure you're always ready for that next big fight, because if you aren't trying to constantly be ready for it, you're easily going to get taken out in seconds. Number 6. Pixel Junk Monsters 2 up until now, I've never put a single tower defense game on any list I've ever written, and that's because many of them don't really feel fresh. They're all kind of just mimicking the same sort of rough ideas, except for this one. Pixel Junk Monsters 2 is hilarious. Basically, you play as a tiny tiki god trying to defend his own little island. As monsters try and come up and invade your area, you build different types of towers that can destroy different enemies. Arrows to take down flying foes, tank cannons to try and drop people on the ground, and magic stuff to try and take other people out as well. That on its own is all kind of cool, but what really gets me is the fact that we are a physical person on the map. You run around as the Tiki God, 
and the way you can upgrade towers is by spending money or doing a little tiki dance next to each one of them to try and upgrade them making them even stronger. There's such a great sense of humor to this, like the developers themselves understood that this is a genre that's gotten a little bit stagnant and they really wanted to do something different to shock us. Number 5. Thumper. There's a phrase I've seen occasionally in really cheesy reviews that goes, this project defies all explanation, and in this case, I have to say that Thumper actually does fit that description. Now the reason I say that is because this game sort of doesn't fit into one genre, but I guess you'd classify it as a rhythm game, because keeping the beat is the key to getting high scores. However, there are added layers to that. Managing to score enough successful attacks in a row makes your multiplier go higher, which means you'll get ever better scores, but at the same time, it also rewards you by making a better beat, a better rhythm, and a better style to the music itself. You see, not only are you playing through different levels, but you're in a sense creating the music just by playing it. It makes it where you're sort of a DJ interacting with a soundtrack by being on a track made of sound. Now, it sounds like such an odd concept, but it really functions in every single level, and I've even seen people who hate this genre get super deep into Thumper because it challenges them to rethink how they pictured playing to the beat. Number 4. Night in the Woods. I want to get a little bit philosophical for this entry because A Night of the Woods has made me afraid of stuff in a way I never really thought about. This is a game about real life. While the characters themselves are cutesy and the art has all sorts of talking animals, the story at the core of this is sort of about being lost in life, about not knowing what the next step is supposed to be. As you wander around day after day without a clear objective, you just try to make friends in this city that you grew up in. We see our heroine try and figure out who who she is and what really is the point of life while we ourselves also think about what is the point of this game. That's something that's so incredibly hard to capture in a game because listlessness, confusion, and just being a little bit lost as to who you are, that's not really easy to put down on paper or on film, but somehow they put it into a video game. This probably isn't something that's ever going to win a Game of the Year award, but it's still something that I think definitely needs to be tried. It's especially on a Nintendo Switch. I feel like getting to sit down and just try and play it outside, enjoy the world and this game as one, it really tried to make me change how I viewed gaming and storytelling. Number 3. Battle Chef Brigade Imagine if one day you woke up and discovered that you had the ultimate skills needed to be the world's top cook. To do this, you not just need to be good with a knife or good in the kitchen, you also need to be able to hunt down the animals that you're going to be serving up. Now, this means that you're going to actually be going out into the field, attacking some evil cabbages, shredding birds, and doing anything it takes to create the ultimate dish. Does that sound ridiculous in the way you like? Well, congratulations, you've just heard about Battle Chef Brigade. The core concept is the fact that there is this amazing game show where everybody competes to be the best of the best in the world of chefhood. Now, that means that basically every single time you're figuring out what the judge is like, whether it be eating a dish that has lots of soup in it or trying to eat something that feels very dry and hot. And then you are unleashed into the wild to try and track down each of the different ingredients where they live, taking them back to the kitchen and then performing a silly puzzle game where you basically match three to cook each of the different ingredients and combine it together to be the ultimate dish. You can tell that the people who made this thought that their own game was so freaking funny. And now, especially that I've put so many hours into it, I feel like I end up laughing along with them to every single moment of this hilarious culinary masterpiece. Number 2. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon it's time to face facts. Konami is a total dumpster fire. As a studio, they're never ever going to go back to the once greatness that they had obtained. So it's now up to the tiny indie developers to create the games that they don't have the guts to make. And one of them is Castlevania. In fact, the people who once made this franchise famous in the first place have now decided to step up and once again bring this series into the light. And this project is so bizarre because they just randomly dropped it 
it on us. There was no announcement. They didn't really hype it up. They just kind of dropped it and said, hey, look at this crazy awesome game we made to melt your brain. And boy, does it. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is essentially an 8-bit Castlevania game that you'd play on the original Nintendo made again in all of its glory. Now, the reason this is so fun is because there are multiple ways to play through it. Each character has different powers and abilities, and trying to take on different bosses with different strengths, it manages to make it where you really feel like you're getting a different experience out of it every single playthrough. And there's tons of weird secrets. Like just yesterday, I heard that if you actually murder the other characters you could be friendly with, you can absorb their powers as well to make it where you can try and make a super character. That is so crazy, and the fact that they just put incredibly complex secrets like that in plain sight for people to just discover on their own shows that they respect their fan base. They trust us to trust them to make the ultimate 8-bit experience in the modern day. Number 1. Celeste there's a problem I've noticed in a lot of games that have come out lately, which is motivation. They create an interesting land and a place to explore, but they never really give you that first push as to why you should care about exploring it. Celeste, though, it weaves a very interesting narrative. This is a young girl who's decided to run away from home, and in an effort to try and conquer her own fears, she decides to climb a massive mountain. Now, doing this is going to be incredibly difficult because it's basically... Hundreds and hundreds of very difficult levels. Each one of these requires you jump, wall kick, and avoid every single spike obstacle you can. This is all incredibly fun though because it never feels impossible. It's hard and at times it rides the line between frustrating and amazing, but it never feels like it's asking too much of you. Whenever you feel yourself getting well pushed past the edge, you can just take a break for a bit, put your switch in sleep mode, and come back to it later. Knowing that you can earn the next incredible cutscene just by getting a little bit further when you're ready to pick it up again later. This is one of those rare experiences that rewards you, so the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And for that reason, I am more of this my pick as the absolute best Nintendo Switch hidden gem game. Did your favorite hidden gem not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. I have seriously played more Splatoon 2 now than any other Nintendo Switch game, and that's why I'm so hyped for that DLC coming up. I never thought I'd say the words that I'm happy for Nintendo DLC, but uh, here we are. Life is strange. Oh, hey! I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.